teachers, I'm Maple Baxter and this is my dog Jasper. Today we'll be talking about Last Child in the Woods by Richard Luke, a teacher resource to explore saving our children from nature deficit disorder. I chose this book because I have noticed firsthand the nature resistant children in today's classroom as well as the rising negative impact of mental health illnesses and environmental degradation. Are they related? With students spending more time inside, we are left wondering if the future cares about the natural environment and its quality at all. How much time do you spend outside on a regular basis? What does it look like out there these days, considering climate change, pollution, and species changes? Is it fun to be outdoors? These are all questions that we need to ask ourselves in this digital age, because kids don't listen to us, they mimic us. I chose this book because I have a general interest in outdoor education and a theory that by getting outside we will do more environmentally positive things, maybe without even realizing it. This book actually inspired my passion project for this class and these are the ways that I relate it to social studies. Analyze ways in which the land affects human settlement patterns and social organization and ways in which human habitation affects land. I also wanted to connect it to treaty outcomes that this book would teach about. Analyze how the movement towards the fulfillment of treaty obligations has positively affected all people in Saskatchewan. I would say that this book is more so a great read for being a great educator. Last Child in the Woods reflects the growing body of evidence linking the lack of nature to children's lives and the rise in obesity, attention disorders, and depression. Hopefully this resource will help me influence middle years kids to consider outdoors more, do more studies outdoors, and relate topics in their classroom to the natural environment. An environment-based education movement at all levels of education will help students realize that school isn't supposed to be a polite form of incarceration, but a portal to the greater world. But middle school children will be able to transfer what they learn about being outside to their learnings in each subject and appreciate what those subjects have to do with the world in general. If we are going to save environmentalism and the environment, we must also save an endangered indicator species, the child in nature. To me, this is saying that if students are to care about the environment at all, they need to see the beauty and the importance of it firsthand. And as I said before, they need to see us enjoying it with little excuse of weather. We often consider the environment to be a science topic, but the justice for species and land is a conversation worth having. Who will speak up for the suffering planet when no one spends time in it anymore? Students have the power to make change. Consider Swedish teen Greta Thunberg. Greta skipped school for a month in Sweden repeatedly to protest and speak out against climate change this year. She's 15 and she is learning that her voice matters. She is demanding that the government undertake a radical response to climate change. Greta also has autism and believes by protesting, she showcases the political potential of neurological difference. We have such a brief opportunity to pass on to our children our love for the earth and to tell our stories. These are the moments when the world is made whole. In my children's memories, the adventures we've had together in nature will always exist. And that's a quote from Last Child in the Woods. For Indigenous people, connecting to the land is imperative, and they feel the importance of protecting it. By understanding the value of the land, I believe we can empathize with the Indigenous perspectives in many ways. I was fortunate to spend much of my time in my childhood outdoors. It makes me sad to say that the next generation might never feel these joys or understand nature as a playground. We could be sacrificing children's creativity, freedom, and self-discovery in our consumerist and tech-based society. One of my students told me that every time she learns the name of, name of a plant, she feels as if she is meeting someone new, giving a name to something as a way of knowing it. This is an important quote from Lou because it shows that by interacting with the natural world, we're not just using it as a disposal, we are actually meeting it and nurturing it just like it nurtures us.